Hi everyone, welcome back to this neonatology series of discussion. So we, you all know this, that the liver is involved in bilirubin metabolism. There is RBCs which lies and produce heme. This heme is converted into biliverdin, which is again converted into bilirubin. This bilirubin is an unconjugated bilirubin which is going to affect the brain and which we are all worried about. This unconjugated bilirubin is taken up by the liver and it is acted upon by the EUGT1A1 enzyme, urotyl glucuronyl transferase enzyme and it is formed into a water soluble conjugated bilirubin. This conjugated bilirubin is excreted into the intestinal lumen and some amount of conjugated bilirubin gets converted into unconjugated bilirubin and it goes into enterohepatic circulation. That, this is what you as pediatric postgraduates know in detail. Now let's add something to this basic structure that we all know. One, the RBC's hemolysis, they produce around 1 gram of hemoglobin, usually produces 34 milligram of bilirubin. So this is an MCQ that has been asked earlier. So 1 gram of hemoglobin produces 34 milligram of bilirubin. A newborn produces 6 to 8 milligram per kg per day of bilirubin in a day. This is against the 3 to 4. Adults produce only half per kg of body weight. Newborns produce 6 to 8 milligram per kg per bilirubin in a day. Now we know that the hemolysis not only the uh, heme does not only come from the hemolysis, but there is one term which is called as ineffective erythropoiesis. So in erythropoiesis, what happens? The RBC cells they become denucleated, the heme becomes incorporated into hemoglobin, and it is engulfed by the RBC. But in case this packaging is not happening normally or effectively. The cell lysis and the heme is again free in the circulation. In newborns, the erythropoiesis is very, very ineffective and therefore there is a lot of free heme in the circulation. And second thing is, there are heme proteins in other enzymes also in the reticular endothelial system. Example, catalases, peroxidases, cytochrome oxidases and even myoglobin. So these also contribute to the heme pool in a newborn. Whereas the RBCs, that is hemolysis and ineffective erythropoiesis, contribute to 89 to 90 percent of bilirubin. The other extra uh, 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 corpuscular uh, heme contribute to 10 to 20 percent of the bilirubin. Now this heme is converted into biliverdin by an enzyme called as the heme oxygenase. Now for all exam purposes. The heme oxygenase is a rate limiting step in bilirubin metabolism. So the heme oxygenase is a rate limiting step in bilirubin metabolism. So uh, RBCs, heme, heme is converted into biliverdin, biliverdin is converted into bilirubin now. This bilirubin that we are, called, we are talking about is called as the unconjugated bilirubin. Now unconjugated bilirubin cannot be so, uh, uh, dissolved in water. It is water insoluble or they call this hydrophobic or it is also known as lyophilic. So if you, you if they use any of these terms it is true about unconjugated bilirubin. So unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble, it is hydrophobic or it is lyophilic. This unconjugated bilirubin can circulate in the circulation only when it is bound to albumin. So almost 99.9% .9 of unconjugated bilirubin is bound to albumin. Only 0.01% of unconjugated bilirubin usually circulates free in the circulation. Now when this proportion that is the unbound unconjugated bilirubin increases, that is why when they cross a the blood brain barrier and cause neuronal toxicity. So we will be reading later what causes this dissociation of unconjugated bilirubin from albumin. Now let's look into the hepatic metabolism of bilirubin. So we saw that bilirubin is taken up by the liver cells. It is acted upon by the UGT1A1 enzyme and it is conjug conjugated to conjugated bilirubin. Now let's have a closer look. We also know that there are two proteins in the liver. One is called as the organic anion transporter protein. Please remember the gene which is responsible for this is called as the SLCO1 
P1 gene. So this protein, this organic anion transporter protein is the one which is going to take up the unconjugated bilirubin from the albumin and transpa uh, transport it into the hepatocytes. There is also another protein called as the ligandin to which the bilirubin, because bilirubin is water insoluble, to which the bilirubin is bound inside the hepatocyte. Now this UGT1A1 enzyme has an promoter region which is composed of Tata box. Okay. So now why am I mentioning all these in details? Because the polymorphism in SLCO1P1 genes, UGT1A1 genes and this Tata box mutations are the ones which contribute to the ethnic variations in the incidence of neonatal jaundice. So this is again a question that has been asked once. Which genetic polymorphism causes an increased risk of hyperbilirubinemia? Now, once a UGT1A1 G, uh, uh, enzyme acts upon the bilirubin, it is conjugated, it becomes water soluble and th thus as a part of bile, it is excreted into the intestinal lumen. Now, in the intestinal lumen, there is an enzyme which is called as Blicta glucuronidase. So, this enzyme is going to convert conjugated bilirubin into the unconjugated bilirubin, which can be reabsorbed into the circulation and contributes to the bilirubin pool again. Now, breast milk also has this beta glucuronidase enzyme, whereas cow milk has an inhibitor of beta glucuronidase. So, that is why your exclusive breastfeeding, though very, very beneficial, becomes a risk factor for high jaundice in neonates. So, in the intestinal lumen, there is an enzyme called as Blicta glucuronidase, which converts the conjugated bilirubin into unconjugated bilirubin again and pushes it into the circulation. Breast milk also has beta glucuronidase and cow's milk as an inhibitor of beta glucuronidase. Now, is bilirubin normally present in the amniotic fluid? In the fetus, the bilirubin is actually metabolized by the placenta. The placenta does the role of the liver. But there is some hepatic circulation happening. There is some conjugation of bilirubin happening in the liver cells. And there is some enterohepatic circulation happening in the intestinal lumen of the fetus also. So yes, there is some bilirubin which is found in the amniotic fluid in the fetus. It starts appearing as early as the 12th week of gestation. And then it usually disappears by 37 weeks of gestation. 